fallout, smoke, women crying for their sons because their sons are not, Romans killing riotous groups that are rising up, free Judea, free our people, autonomy for Israel. You had Herod and Edomite and his dynasty, Herod's ruling, killing any potential threat, any potential Messiah. Then you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees that we learn from Josephus are not Jews by birth. No. Right. Now look at these. Yeah, I'm telling you, I got to show y'all. A, a picture speaks a thousand words. Just look for yourself. And this is the creme de la creme. All praises be to the Most High, y'all. Everything we've been through, y'all, the Most High is going to retribute it on all the nations that have had a hand in the oppression of his apple, the apple of his eye, his chosen people, his beloved, his fervent lover, his only begotten. They're going to have their part in the lake of fire. You see them tormented by some kind of creature. I don't even know what that even is, y'all. Judgment in chains. He that led into captivity shall go into captivity. All praise to the Most High God. What group of people have gone through the full extent of this terror, servitude, yoke of iron, a nation with an uh, eagle image, immigrants coming in after them rising up and getting reparation offers, their kids being sold into captivity, you having kids but not enjoying them because they splitting up families, you betrothing a wife but another man laying with her, y'all gotta look at the power of a prophecy prophesied thousands of years ago. Moses was a bad man, but even more bad than Moses was the Most High Yah, the dreadful and terrible Almighty Creator, who prophesied every lick of this on our black behinds, and it came to pass without fail. Now let's look at verse 68. It said, Thou that dwells in the clefts of the rock. Whoa, I know a lot of y'all know about the Caucasus Mountains. Let's just let the word speak. Let's go to verse 4. Though you exalt yourself as the eagle, and though you set thy nest among the stars. What's up, Zion Dynasty? This is your favorite dreaded Israelite, the man, the myth, and the legend, Mr. JB Zion. Y'all, show me some love, show me some love, and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Zion Dynasty, where I'm about to hit y'all with another all praises, honor, glory, dominion, majesty to the Most High Yah, the Mighty One of Jacob, the Holy One of Israel, and y'all, y'all are in for a treat on this one. So first, I want to say peace, love, blessings, black power to all my Israelite family, the chosen race of the Most High Yah, all my Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters. I also want to extend a warm peace, love, blessings, prosperity to the full, to the overflow, to all of my Gentile supporters, all those that's rocking with Israel that ain't lost in the sauce, all those that ain't with the Urban Apologist grave site. Urban Apologist grave site trolling and to all my trolls i welcome you as well because you're gonna get this work and this is the channel where we bring that smoke this is the channel where we got the dna we got the archaeology we got dr tudor parfit type professors harvard accredited we got oxford scholars like edith Ruder on this channel not just that we got the oral tradition of the african tribes by which the african americans come from Verified by Cambridge authors, Ulysses Santa Maria. We got all the smoke. We got all the smoke. We, my brothers and sisters, are the chosen race of the Most High Yah. We are the biblical descendants of the children of Israel, and this is that channel. Let's get it. So, y'all, this is gonna be this gonna be hype, y'all. This this gonna be a legendary one. As y'all saw in the title, uh, your boy is about to deal with. World War III. I know a lot of y'all have been messaging and commenting and asking like, man, are we in the last days? What's going on? I had people ask about Russia. Is Russia Gog and Magog? 
we are about to deal with it. But before we go too deep, if y'all want to keep this work going, y'all, if y'all want to support and all that good stuff, I'm going to put the cash app on the screen. We could not do this without y'all. Every donation helps us be able to be closer. Like I didn't tell y'all, one step closer to be able to throw our entire selves at this. That is our heart. That is my dream to be able to, to just focus on ministry, focus on research, focus on the word of the most high y'all, focus on the DNA, the history, the tribes in Africa to be able to give you all this research, which is your history and it belongs to you. So. We're about to get into it. So as you guys know, we've been dealing with Esau, right? We've been dealing with the arch nemesis of Jacob, the people that would exist in the very end, the last ruling empire, the last world governmental system of doing things, this capitalistic, this critical race theory based society, right? This is a group of people, right? We looked at how Satan the spirit has hand selected hand groomed a specific lineage that the bible tells us would be that last ruling empire that last uh first rate world empire world governing people before yeshua comes back destroys all these nations and establishes the world without end this is the government where israel reigns Israel is exalted, the lifestyle of selflessness and family, and I am because we are this African sentiment, this Israelite family-oriented government, we got next, all praises be to the Most High, yeah. So we laid the groundwork. We said that this arch nemesis, this, this, this war of the titans between Israel and the way we think, the way our government is run based on Torah, and this European Edomite Roman system that this clash of these titans all started in Genesis chapter 25 with the birth of Jacob and Esau y'all so we went through all that history we talked about how Ezra right check this out Ezra in the hidden book of 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 9 said for Esau is the end of the world this is to all the urban apologists. This is to all those proclaimed the theologians and scholars. You have to admit that based on scripture, Esau would be the end of the world, that last ruling empire, and Jacob will be the beginning of it that follows all praises. And all of this, my friends, my family, all of this began in Genesis 25, and we saw through the hidden books, uh, we saw through Legends of the Jews, that it was actually Shem that prophesied to Rebecca when she had all this pain in her stomach. She had been barren. Then the Most High answered the prayer of Isaac and opened his wife's womb. But she's struggling, y'all. She got this war going on. She like, why my belly feel like it's on king? Right? And we find out that it's because she actually has twins in her womb and that the Most High prophesies to her that the older would serve the younger. That this, this older child and his descendants would have this world universal empire, but the younger son in the end, through it all, in the age to come, would rule world without end. So we went through all of that, y'all. But as we went through this, we talked about the Europeans, we talked about Zepho, how Zepho was a savage man. I mean, he got loose from Israel, he went to Europe, he went to where Chittim was and founded a, a legendary Roman dynasty. The eternal city of Rome was founded by Zepho. Zepho was the forefather and Zepho, we saw, was the grandson of Esau. And we talked about Amalek. We also talked about how Amalek was another branch, another family of Edomites that were actually in the land of Canaan that set the stage, right, for the great swap that we're about to talk about in this video. So family, in this video, we're about to deal with a hidden family of Edomites. The hidden family of Edomites. You've been seeing it on the news. You've been hearing about gas prices going up. You've been hearing about a potential World War III scenario. And this family that has been making all headlines because of what's going on with them and Ukraine is none other than Russia. 
Now y'all, I pray to the most high this video does not get taken down because your boy is about to go historically astute. The scripture says where two or three witnesses are gathered, let every word be established. I'm not gonna come up here with no clickbait title and not show myself approved through the scholarship. We are about to go through some, some credible sources, y'all. We're going to look at Josephus. We're going to look at Shlomo Sand. Now, Shlomo Sand actually teaches contemporary history at the University of Tel Aviv in Jerusalem. The Jewish geneticist, credibility. We're going to deal with him. We're going to deal with Arthur Kosler, who also is an Ashkenazi Jew himself and historian, credibility. We're gonna look at Dr. Windsor. Dr. Windsor in the Valley of the Dry Bones. This guy has a doctorate in Hebrew and Aramaic studies. And we're gonna use these in conjunction with the prophecies of the scripture to look at Russia. We are gonna look at not just Russia in a blanket statement, but we're gonna look at a segment of Russians that have performed a great swap. And according to Arthur Kostler, these Russians have perpetrated the greatest hoax in human history. Yeah, I'm about to talk about it. We are about to talk about the Khazars. Now, I know a lot of my Israelite family have been saying things like, yo, JB, you know, Esau ain't, ain't America or, or Rome or these Europeans. Esau is those Turkish, Turkish people. This is why I need y'all to, to, to think with me. Esau mixed his seed with a lot of different people. Edom or Edomites are we saw the Amalekites in the land of Canaan. We saw about Zepho in the ancient Roman Empire. We also saw Zepho in Africa, y'all. So Esau and his descendants, the Edomites, have been in a number of different places. The chief place is the Japheth borders. We saw that Zepho became one with the people of Chittim and he conquered the entire two ball region, the entire European area. So from antiquity, Esau's seed dominated Europe, right? Dominated the land of Japheth, right? So before we go too deep, I, it's a lot, y'all. Y'all stay with me. We're gonna talk about Russia and we're gonna talk about how and why Russia is finna come on the scene and has a lot to do with you all. It has a lot to do with my Hebrew brothers and sisters, my Hebrew Israelite family that know who they are. Because Russia has a group of their people that have become and swapped with Jacob in becoming the greatest, most notorious uh, perjuries. Russia's, that Russian segment of Khazarian Turks have perpetrated the worst and greatest crime of identity theft in human history. And we're about to talk about those Khazars. But first, let's set some groundwork. Let's go to Genesis chapter 10 and look at Japheth and the sons of Japheth and the present day European countries. Let's deal with it. So family, first we're gonna set some groundwork. This is gonna be y'all get, get you a pen, get you some paper, take you some notes. We're dealing with Russia. We're dealing with World War III. We're dealing with the Khazarian Turkish Russian people that became the modern Jews and swapped our identity and wear the black hats. We're gonna deal with that people. The people that I've been teasing when we've been talking about this Edomite series, I have not dealt with the Ish people in totality. I've just dealt with a lot of Edomite groups like, you know, the daughter of Babylon, America, which I do have a, a separate video just for America. We talked about Rome, ancient Rome, the Greeks, but we have not specifically dealt with the Ish people. These Ish people, a lot of them, these Ashkenazi Jewish people, descend from these Russian, Turkish, nomadic, Edomite tribes. And we're about to deal with it. So in Genesis chapter 10, we're gonna set the groundwork with the Gentile, Japheth, European borders. We're gonna break this all the way down, family. So in Genesis chapter 10, verse one, it reads, now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham are Kam and Japheth are Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, y'all. Now, this is the important part. This is Europe. Japheth is the father of the European Gentile countries. Now, the sons of Japheth Gomer, 
Magog, keep Magog in your mind, and Media, and Javin, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tyrus. Verse 3, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riphath, and Togorma. Verse 4, and the sons of Javin, Elisha, and Tarshish, Chittim, and Dodanum. Verse 5, by these were the islands of the Gentiles divided. That means all the Gentiles in antiquity, the original term of the Gentiles, I'm not talking about Hellenized Israelites that mixed in with these Europeans during the time of the Greeks. We're talking about the purest, most antiquitous form of Gentiles, which are these Japheth descendants. So verse five says, by these were the islands of the Gentiles divided in their lands. Everyone after his tongue and after their families in their nations. All praises be to the Most High Yah for the reading of his word. There are a lot of nations that are mentioned right there, y'all. We got to break these down. So with Japheth and with his descendants, we see Gomer, who is the father of Ashkenaz, like the Ashkenazi Jews. We see Magog, which I'm going to show you Magog, along with some more of these borders, make up antiquity or, or, or ancient Russia. So we see Gomer, the father of the Ashkenaz, Magog, which is Russia. We're going to deal with that. Media, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, which is Moscow. We're going to deal with that entire USSR and all the borders that used to be originally a part of Russia. And Tyrus, right? Also, we saw Chittim being a descendant of Javan. Now, y'all got to read this for yourself and kind of just let it get in your mind so you can see what's going on. We see Chittim. We see Chittim, which is ancient Rome. We see Greece uh, and Media and Javan and that whole Grecian region. We see Magog, Russia, that northern region. Uh, Meshach, Gomer, who is the father of Ashkenaz. All of these make up the Gentiles. All of these are the Gentiles. All of these are the Gentiles that have anything to do when I talk about Hellenized Israelites. It's because of these Gentile countries, right? These Gentile nations. Now, what makes things a little bit complicated is we talked about this, y'all. Shem had a descendant named Esau. Now, we know Jacob and Esau, right? These are the sons of Isaac and Rebekah. Esau's descendants eventually went to Japheth and his borders and became one with these people. We talked about Zephyr and all this stuff. So you have these Gentile countries. You got Ashkenaz, you got Greece, you got Russia. Um, you have all these different borders that are Gentiles, and then you got a Shemite, Esau, going in and becoming one with these people. Why is this important? To understand Magog, or Gog and Magog, to understand Russia, you have to know about Esau that has hidden himself. Because Esau is the actual blood lineage that would be a part of these Turkish, um, Russian, uh, Khazarian people. So these Gentile, Khazarian, Khazar, Turkish people are actually Esau's descendants. So when a lot of y'all comment and be like, well, JB, you know, Esau is not the father of, of, of Rome and that kind of thing. Um, or Esau is not the end of the world and that kind of thing. You guys have a lot of different points. So I'm, let's, let me deal with some of that. So Esau is the end of the world. Esau's descendants, the Edomites, are the last ruling empire. A lot of y'all are looking at Luke chapter 21 that says that the land of Israel will be trodden down by the Gentiles. Yes. Also, you got to understand that Christ very well knew that Rome would be the last ruling empire. Christ himself knew that the Romans would destroy Jerusalem. In that same chapter of Luke 21, Christ prophesied this. So Rome by ethnicity is actually Esau is actually Edom and the Gentiles that would trot down the land of Israel by blood are Edomites that are a part of Japheth, that are a part of these Gentiles. So it's safe to say that the land of Israel will be conquered by these Gentile countries fueled and led 
by this synagogue of Satan, these Edomites, this red dragon that has this perpetual hatred for Jacob. And we're gonna see how that hatred is what is fueling Russia. The awakening has a lot to do with it. And I gotta tell y'all, that Russian icons book is a Russian icons book. Understand, Russia is that secret, hidden Edomite family that has been watching us, y'all, that knows who we are better than we know. And they have performed a sinister swap in sending these Turkish, Khazarian, Jewish people, these ish people that have infiltrated the land under Ashkenaz and all these other guises to keep us from getting back to the land. I repeat, Russia's goal is to dominate the Middle East. Now we're gonna get into that, but I'm gonna drop one nugget real quick. In Dr. Windsor's book, he talks about how oil is gonna be a lot of the reason that people think World War III is gonna pop off. Y'all looking at gas prices now. This brother wrote this book in 1986. Y'all stay with me. And he said that oil would be a contributing factor. Now this is in 1986, and we see what's happening now, y'all, but it's not about oil. Is Russia wants the Middle East. Russia wants to sit in the temple to show themselves as God through these Edomite, Turkish, Khazarian, Ish-ish people that want to dominate that land. Now, we talked about this, how Esau stood against Joseph. And Esau said, Joseph, you ain't getting back to this land. Now, Joseph was trying to bury his father. Now, this is in the book of Jasher, chapter 56 and 57. Joseph and the children of Israel the 12 patriarchs are trying to bury Jacob in the land of Canaan. And Esau said, I ain't having it. Esau is the spirit, watch this, of Lucifer, the anointed cherub angel that was sent by the Most High to guard the land of Israel, to, or to guard the Garden of Eden first, to keep Adam from coming back. When you look at the New Testament, I believe in Galatians, it says that Jerusalem is the mother of us all. So most scholars believe that Jerusalem was the heartbeat or at least an extension of the Garden of Eden. So what is going on? You have Satan, this angel with eagle's wings, trying to guard the Garden of Eden to keep Adam from coming back. We see the Garden of Eden would have been Jerusalem. Now you have Satan's spiritual people, his physical lineage, the Edomites guarding that same land to keep us as the Israelites, a lot of us descending from Yoruba Israelites, which are Joseph literally, and a lot of Judah and Levi, just the entire 12 tribes, trying to get back to that land, you have a people that said, you ain't coming back. And this started back in the book of Jasher with Esau stopping Joseph in the 12 then. This is a spiritual battle, y'all. This has been going on for a long time and things are about to pop off with Russia. So we looked at Genesis 10. We saw Magog, which is Russia. We saw Ashkenaz, son of Go uh, I mean, make son of Gomer, right? We see even Chittim being mentioned in Japheth. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the end time foundation prophecy that talks about this war that is getting ready to happen, y'all. So we're gonna look at the book of Joel, chapter three, and this entire passage shows us what's getting ready to happen, y'all. Let's turn to it. So in the book of Joel, chapter three, we're gonna begin at the first verse. It says, for behold, in those days and in that time will I, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. I repeat, when I, said the most high Yah, shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Why do I say it like that? The Most High says he himself will deliver his people. Now, I know a lot of y'all were like, how is he going to do it? Now, that part the Most High don't tell you. But he says he's going to do it in a way where you know this is the Most High doing this. Where he restores Judah, restores Jerusalem, brings that captivity, brings those captives back to the land. Let's keep reading. Verse 2. I will also gather all the nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them therefore for my people and for my heritage Israel 
whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. What we have going on, y'all, with this World War III, with this Russian, with this Gog and Magog, it's the Most High getting ready to bring all these nations into the Valley of Jehoshaphat, which we shall see is the land of Israel, where they will self-destroy each other. Understand, in World War III, all these bombs, these dominoes of nuclear weapons that they've been stacking up, they got more bombs than they got food to feed their people. All these bombs they got, bombs to wipe a man's eyes out of his head and, and liquefy him where he didn't even know what happened. He just walking and he's gone. All these bombs that they've been stockpiling, this stuff is going to hit a, a peak, right? Where the nations destroy themselves through their greed, all these bombs that they've made, all of their avarice to get land and to conquer, the Most High is going to allow them to destroy themselves in this war of Armageddon. And during that time, Michael the Archangel himself is going to stand and fight for Zion. The, I talked about this with Josephus, y'all. That when Yah left his hand off of us as a people in AD 70, Josephus recounts that it sounded like trains on a railroad track that were leaving Jerusalem. Our father took his literal hand off of Zion. Our people could feel it like they got chills, like they felt the presence of the Most High leave them. And then Rome wreaked havoc. Now check this out. That same presence that left us is coming back, Zion. Oh boy, y'all. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Boy, I almost called you out. Boy, y'all better talk to me. The same presence that left us is going to come back. The scripture says that the weakest among them shall be as David. And the ones that got strength like David shall be as God. Understand what I'm saying? I'm going to put the scripture on the screen in case y'all think I'm playing. So when that presence comes back, when Michael stands up for Israel, the nations are going to be in that land destroying themselves and we're going to go right through the fire. <laughs> Boy, y'all better talk to me. We're going to go right through the fire, Zion. Now y'all watch this now. Let's keep reading. So in verse 2, it said, I will also, at the same time that he's bringing the captivity back in verse 1, he's going to gather all the nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them. That means war going to break out and the Most High going to be like, now nah, y'all better, I'm going to start killing y'all. Now I'm pleading with y'all, do right, but we know they ain't going to do right. The Most High going to plead with them with the edge of the sword with these nuclear bombs for his people, for his heritage Israel, whom these European Esau nations have scattered among the nations and parted his land and divided it. They fighting over a land that ain't even theirs, verse three. And they have cast lots for my people. They sold them as bond women and bond men and have given a boy as a harlot, a Mandingo warrior, and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Prostitution and just raping my, my daughters, the daughter of Zion. All this wickedness y'all thought y'all was getting away with. All the alligator bait, let's go to first four. Yes. And what have I to do with you, O Tyre and Zidon? These are African Phoenician port cities. And all the coast of Palestine. Are you gonna recomp are you gonna render me a recompense? Are you gonna give me something for what you've done? And if you try to, if you try to recompense me, says the most high, swiftly and speedily, I'm gonna pit it back on your head. I don't even want no talks no more. It's over. Verse 5. Because you have taken my silver and my gold out of the gold coast of West Africa. Y'all better talk to me. And have carried into your temples my good, pleasant things? Verse 6, the children also of Judah and the children in Jerusalem. Y'all check this out. Because you had a lot of different tribes living in Jerusalem during this time. So it says the children of Judah, which we know are in that area, and the other 12 tribes that's in Jerusalem, you sold unto the white man? You sold unto the Grecians? That you might remove them far from their border, from the land that I promised to them? Behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them and will return the very reward upon your head. Everything that you did to them, I'm going to put it back on your head. And I will sell your sons. Y'all check this out. Verse 8. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of Judah 
Oh my goodness! And they shall sell them to the Sabians and to a people far off. He that led them to captivity shall go. There's so many verses that say that, not just Revelation 13, verse 10. Not just when we talk about King David, what he did to Edom. Not just how they was put to death by uh, the prophet Samuel because Saul went and did it. Not just the fact that Joshua will war with these people from generation to generation. The Most High has uttered a divine death sentence against these nations and the remnant that's left going into captivity all praises be to the most high God now let's look at verse 9 proclaim you this among the Gentiles so this is the gospel of the kingdom I've been telling y'all what I'm telling you right now is we're gonna start telling now on the rooftops y'all that's why I tell y'all like share subscribe comment spread this video because this message has to go forth because when this goes forth the most high saying go ahead and get ready because I'm coming with that smoke Go ahead and proclaim it to all the Gentiles. Let's read. Prepare war and wake up the mighty men. Let all your mighty men get ready. Let them come. Let them turn their, beat your plowshares into swords. Take your pruning hooks and turn them into spears. It ain't no time for farming. It's a time to, to fight. Verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come all you heathen, all you nations. Gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down. He said, bring all the smoke, bring all your mighty men, bring all your bombs, and let's go to Jehoshaphat. Let's go to the Middle East. Y'all been fighting over the land? Come on, let's go. And at the same time, he's going to be bringing us there. Michael and all them UFO, the chariots, the host of heaven, going to start equipping us with spiritual power, y'all. They're going to start fighting. We're going to start seeing people getting killed by laser men. We're just going to keep on walking. We're going to see the most high raining down thunderbolts and pestilence and people's skulls going in the back of their head. And we're going to keep on walking. See, the scripture says, y'all check this out, that this second exodus is going to put the first exodus to shame. Y'all better talk to me. So why am I going through all this? This valley of Jehoshaphat. This, all these nations are coming together. The stage is set by Russia. By Russia. Y'all check this out. So now I'm finna start bringing these sources out and we finna deal with it. Cause this video going kinda long. I'm trying to really get this to y'all. I might do a follow up. Y'all let me know. But in Dr. Windsor's book that I told y'all, he talked about the secret cause of World War III. In it, he goes through uh, Russia, and how Russia is trying to reestablish her ancient borders. Now, it's a lot to that. Russia is upset with Ukraine because Russia feels that Ukraine used to be a part of the USSR, the ancient Soviet Union. Now y'all can, now I'm giving y'all a brief synopsis of what's going on right now. Russia wants to get Ukraine back, mainly because of the resources, but Russia wants to reconquer Ukraine. And it's not just about Ukraine. It's really about dominating that whole region is what Russia's after. But right now the war's going on and we see them discriminating against a lot of black folks that's in Ukraine. They can't even get out the country, y'all. I should have did a separate thing on that. I, I didn't know how bad it was. But they're trying to walk and get out the country and they're making a hell for these black folks. Our people, we under these curses. So Russia is trying to reconquer Ukraine. But Ukraine is trying to file for citizenship with NATO. The 10 toes of the statue now, the 10 market company, company uh, the 10 market companies. So Ukraine is trying to become a part of the UN and hurry up and do it so that they can obligate United States of America, United States of Babylon, and all these countries to fight on their behalf against Russia. But Russia knows that that's a two to three year process at least so Russia's trying to hurry up and, and conquer, beat them into submission, reconquer Ukraine um, before this happens. Now, that's just a synopsis of what's been going on, y'all. Now, I said all that to say this. Russia is going to continue this work and Russia is going to succeed. I repeat, prophetically, and I'm going to show y'all, Russia is going to dominate and Russia is even going to dominate all the way down to the North African coast. Y'all check this out. All the Muslim Arab territories. Where did I get that from? Russia is allies with the Arabs. On paper, but not legit. Russia is trying to mobilize, get themselves together, recoup their borders. So that the next time something pops off in the Middle East, Russia is going to fight for the Arabs side with the Arab African bloc, that entire unit that's going to come against Israel, 
right? Now y'all check this out. When that happens, the 10 market companies in China are gonna go to war against Russia and this is where we're gonna see the end. This is where we're gonna see I I Zion make their trip back to the land, make our pilgrimage, our Aliyah, back to the land of our forefathers. Where did I get all that from? I want to kind of go ahead and tell y'all before we go into it. So we have Dr. Windsor's book, um, The Valley of the Dry Bones. In it, he kind of breaks this thing down about Russia and that kind of thing, and how Russia is trying to reclaim her borders, the ancient Soviet uh, Union borders, right? Now, in this same book, Dr. Windsor, I'm gonna turn to it. Dr. Windsor begins to explain, based on the theologians, based on the scholars, that Russia is Gog and Magog. Now, I've already told y'all that and I showed you Genesis chapter 10, but we're gonna prove that. Now, to prove that, we have to go to Ezekiel chapter 38, and let's go to it. So in Ezekiel chapter 38, we see, let's start at verse one, and the word of the Most High Yah came unto me saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. So we see that Gog is actually a title for this prince ruler of the land of Magog and the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Now we got to define what these regions are to link it to Russia. Now, I'm gonna give you guys some sources. The first one is Josephus. In Josephus, uh, book one, uh, section six, he talks about the different descendants of Japheth. And he links Magog which he, with the ancient Scythians. Or the Magogians are the ancient Scythians. Why is this important? This is important because on page 135 of Dr. Windsor's book, it states that according to Webster's Geographical Dictionary, Scythia was the ancient name of parts of Southern Europe and Asia now included in Russia. So in ancient times, it was referred to as Scythian, but presently, these are the areas that Russia now accompanies, or, or occupies, right? So Russia and the borders presently is ancient Scythia, which is ancient Magogian, which is Magog, right? Gog is just a title for the ruler or the leader or Putin or whoever the, the person is that's gonna be leading Russia, that's gonna have conquest over Meshach, which now that's defined Meshach. So Josephus again in the book of antiquities, book one, uh, section six, says that Meshach is linked to the word Moshach or Moscow. Now y'all, this is some heavy stuff, y'all. These are run-of-the-mill scholars. This is Josephus, one of the most prized Jew Jewish historians and contemporaries who would know these ancient terms in the Bible and link them to present people. And this is also Dr. Windsor from Babylon and Timbuktu that talked about the over a million Jews that fled into Africa and he's written so many other works. Um, but so we see from these two scholars that according to Josephus, according to the geographic uh, Webster's dictionary, that Scythian is the Magogian people, which is present Russia, right? And that Meshach is Moscow. So what we see in verse two, let's go back to Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 38 says, son of man, face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him. So Ezekiel is commanded to prophesy against this leader of Gog, Magog, Meshach, which is Moscow, uh, Magog, which is the Scythian, Russian, Southern Europe, Asiatic region. That entire Northern Russian mountain of a, of a border, right? All of this is linked to Russia. Why do we bring up Gog and Magog being linked to Russia? Because what we're gonna see is that Russia is gonna play a big part being referred to as the land of the north in end time prophecy and fighting against the nations during the time of Armageddon. Armageddon is the end time war, y'all. So before we go there, I'm gonna give you guys some more sources. I'm gonna give y'all some more smoke. So 
when we look at Arthur Kosler and the 13th tribe, now I believe this brother was murdered. I mean, it's some dark stuff about what happened. After he published this book, I think they murdered him and his family and um, some other stuff. I have to fa fact check that, y'all, but it, it didn't end good for this guy. And I think the same fate happened with Shlomo Sain that wrote, uh, I'm sorry, the same fate happened with Shlomo Sain and the invention of the Jewish people, um, all because of these works that they made, y'all. So what I'm finna hit y'all with is some big stuff. Arthur Kosler and his 13th tribe book, um, it's called the 13th tribe and in it he talks about the origin of the modern Ashkenazi people that they're actually linked to a place called Khazaria or that they are Khazars now when you look up this area that Arthur Kostler talks about it is located in the same regions that we just talked about with Dr. Windsor in that Black Sea Caspian Caucasus region right now why is that important because that same region of southern southern eastern Russia Khazaria is the same people that are now the modern ish people I repeat in that same Caspian Sea uh, southern Europe region where we get the Khazars from this is also a border extension of Russia. So, according to H.G. Wales, which I showed you guys that quote early on in the series, H.G. Wales, let's read it. H.G. Wales says the Edomites or Idumeans were made Jews and a Turkish people, Khazars, were mainly Jews in South Russia. The main part of Jewry never was in Judea and had never come out of Judea. This is where we see the second prime minister, Gamal Abdul Nasser, say you left black and you came back white, you'll never have peace. Because they knew that people were Turkish, Edomite, Russian people that never had lived in Judea. They were never linked to the 12 tribes. The name of the book is 13th tribe because it's meant to be sarcastic that they're not linked to Jacob, but they are actually a convert people of Khazaria that converted to Judaism, y'all check this out, and around 600 to 700, about 745 AD, they converted when faced with an onslaught of pressure from the Byzantine, Byzantine Empire that wanted to convert them to Christianity, and then the Muslim Caliphate that wanted to convert them to Islam. All of this is in Arthur Kostler's The 13th Tribe, which is also verified. So we talked about Josephus linking Russia to Magog. We talked about that. We talked about how Dr. Windsor corroborates that, but he also talks about how this is in the area of the Caspian Sea. Let me read that verbatim for y'all. So now this is in Dr. Windsor's book. I'm gonna read this for y'all. On page 35, 135, it says, Josephus, the historian, informs us that the Scythians descended from the Magogites, Magog, Webster's Geographical Dictionary reveals, this is Webster's, that Scythia was the ancient name of parts of Southern Europe and Asia, now included in Russia. The Scythians were a nomadic savage race that inhabited regions north and northeast of the Black Sea and east of the Aral Sea in southern Russia. So, now we see, now it's a lot going on. We got Webster's Dictionary, we got Josephus, we got, got Dr. Windsor, we got Arthur Kostler. Now let's go to Arthur Kostler's and we're gonna read about that same region where these Khazars come from. So we read in Dr. Windsor about that Black Sea area, that Caucasus Russian area. In Arthur Kostler's book, he says, that the Khazar sway extended from the Black Sea to the Caspian, from the Caucasus to the Volga, and they were instrumental in stopping the Muslim onslaught against Byzantium. Now Byzantium, we're talking about the Christian uh, East, I believe, and then you have the Muslim Caliphate that was going on around that same time. So they were warring for whose religion would dominate Khazaria, right? And the Khazar said, well, the Christians, y'all come from the Judean people. They said, well, the Christians, y'all come from the Judean people. 
And um, Muslims, y'all honor the people of the book, and even Ishmael's in that book with the Jews will convert to Judaism. All of this is in Arthur Coaster's 13th Tribe, where he says the greatest hoax in human history has taken place. These Khazarians have made themselves the modern Jewry today via the Ashkenazi Jew. The two biggest forms of Jewry today are the Ashkenazi Jews and the Sephardic Jews. The Ashkenazi Jews make up 98% of proclaimed Jewry. I repeat, 98%. The Sephardic Jews, you don't even really hear about them, mainly because when you look at the Jews and Moors of Spain, our people descend from those that were banished from Spain, i.e. Sephardim, i.e. Sephardic Israelites, the Negro, the Yaya Negro, Negro is Spanish from 1555. We talked about that in Webster's Dictionary. We talked about that in the history of the word Negro, that the word Negro is Spanish. We are the Sephardic Israelites. The oral tradition vouched for by Cambridge of the Yoruba is that they were banished from Morocco, banished from Spain in 1492 by King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. So I got, we got buku receipts proving that we're the Sephardic Israelites. That's why it's not that much jury in the land linked to them because they know they can't substantiate that because wait, they know we're finding out who we are. But the other 98%, these Ashkenazi, a lot of them trace their ancestry to Khazar or the Khazarian, Turkish, Russian, warlike, savage, Edomite people, right? This stuff is heavy. But along with that, the international bestseller Shlomo San, the Jewish geneticist, the New York Times bestseller, who actually teaches contemporary history, or taught contemporary history, at the time of me having this book, I don't know if he presently teaches, but it says teaches contemporary history uh, at the University of Tel Aviv in Jerusalem, also says the same thing, and I'm gonna read it on the back of it. A historical tour de force the invention of the Jewish people offers a groundbreaking account of Jewish and Israeli history, exploding the myth that there were that there was a forced Jewish exile in the first century at the hands of the Romans. They said these people ain't linked to that. Israeli historian Shlomo San, and he's a historian, argues that most modern Jews descend from converts. We just saw that in Arthur Coast the 13 tribe. We just saw the region that Arthur Kosler talks about being linked to Russia and Mishat or Moscow, according to the uh, Webster's Geographical Dictionary and according to Josephus in Book One, Section Six. <laughs> Why well, I'm telling y'all, all of this is <laughs> the purpose of me doing this, sign is that these people, these Khazarian Turkish people, make up the bulk. 90 to 98 percent of modern Jewry today, these Ashkenazis, genetically, according to Shlomo San and according to Arthur Kosler, both of these are Ashkenazi Jews. Historically, they come from these Khazars who are converts to Judaism. They converted around 745 AD. Now, what makes things even deeper is that you don't see the tribe of Dan in the 144,000. Now, y'all, I'm not trying to go too deep. I know this has been a long one, but the tribe of Dan were known as serpent people at different points in history. And some people argue, now I don't fully put my stock in this theory, but some people argue, I think it's interesting, that the tribe of Dan, that the symbol of the Khazarian people was a serpent and were called, they called themselves the serpent people. In Genesis 49, it says that Dan shall be an adder or a serpent in the way. A serpent, twisted, wicked, deceptive people that committed the most cruel hoax in human history and claiming themselves to be Judeans and history has fooled us or as history would have it these people have been able to discombobulate all people and fooling them to think that they are actually descendants of Jacob and these are the people in the land today but what makes things darker is the fact I know this is a lot y'all I might break this up you guys but what makes things darker is the fact that Russia is now trying to occupy their ancient borders, including the Middle East, which they're going to say is because of the gas prices. Y'all watch. Just know that JB told y'all first. This is by prophetic utterance of the Most High. Yeah. 
Russia's next move is the Middle East. Watch, book it, watch. They're, but the whole claim is gonna be because of oil shortages. They're trying to dominate the land because the spirit of Satan, the spirit of Edom, knows that the time is short and that Zion, we getting ready to go back to the land, y'all. So Zion, y'all need to be prepped. We need to get our minds thinking like a nation. The Most High is getting ready to show out, y'all. When Russia starts to exalt itself as that eagle and set down in the land of Israel to show themselves as God, just know that war is going to pop out between NATO and China that are going to side against Russia. And then after that, NATO is going to go to war against China. Y'all like, where are you getting this stuff from? Watch now. And I got a lot of receipts. China is then going to go to war against NATO. They're going to destroy themselves. And all of this is going to be going on while the most high y'all takes us by the hand back to that land. So I know y'all this was a lot and this was a long one. If y'all want to get these books, y'all check these out on Amazon before they pull them. Russia is, I'm telling y'all, they pit their people in that land through them Khazarian people and now they see the awakening going on and they're spying on Zion. They're watching this information. They know their time is short, but the Most High is going to destroy them and they know it. Their time is short. So y'all, I know this was a deep ride, but just know World War III, Russia is key because of those Khazarian-ish people. They're going to go to war against NATO, China. Russia's going to exalt themselves in the land of the Middle East. They're going to say it's because of oil. We see the gas prices. All of this is playing into the prophetic time frame of the war of Armageddon, where the Most High turns our captivity back, y'all, and destroys these nations and leads the remnant into captivity for what they have done to Zion. So with that, y'all, I know this was a lot. I might do a follow-up. Y'all comment and let me know. If y'all want me to rehash a previous topic, y'all, I'm always up to that, y'all. I do this for y'all. So I love y'all. I couldn't do this without y'all. Me and Shawnee D, we just love our Zion Dynasty family. Y'all are better than blood, you know? And we couldn't do this without y'all. So I love you all with the love of the Messiah. Peace, love, blessings, and black power to the chosen race of the Most High, y'all. Yoruba, Benai Ephraim, of the son of Joseph, of the son of Jacob. I love you all. Shalom. All praises.